Welcome to the Speak With People podcast, holiday party edition. My name is Jason Reitz. I'm going to be your host today on this podcast, and I'm also going to be the guest. Now, I'm not going to play both podcast host and guest, but you just got me on today's very special bonus episode as we talk about how to speak with our families this holiday season. As you listen to the Speak With People podcast, you know that we believe healthy communication is oxygen for our relationships and our leadership. And when you choose to speak with people, you breathe life into them. If you choose to speak at people, you suck the life out of them. So we really hope that our time on this podcast encourages you, inspires you, challenges you to elevate the importance and practice of healthy communication in your life and leadership. Well, let's jump in. We are in this incredible series called Lead With People, Not At Them. How is the series going for you? I'd love to know. Seriously, email me, jason at speakwithpeople.com. Jason at speakwithpeople.com. Send me an email. Let me know how the series is going. Let me know if it's impacted you in a positive way, if there's anything negative you've pulled out of it, if there's practical skills you're learning, if it's, if it's helping you lead with people not at them. I would really love to know. It is what we call a mega series. It's eight weeks of incredible, of just incredible guests. I mean, we have a Harvard business professor. We have an executive coach. We have a business author who's published five best-selling business books. I mean, it's just been absolutely fantastic. And if you have not downloaded the Leadership Collective yet, the ebook companion that goes along with the series with another 37 leadership principles from leaders from all over the country. Make sure you go to speakwithpeople.com slash lead with people and download that today. Well, it is exciting. It's holiday season. I mean, Thanksgiving is here and it, it is today. This episode actually airs on Thanksgiving Day. And what we wanted to do is <laughs> as a leader, you, you, you all have a family. We all have families. And our families should be the most important part of our leadership. And so sometimes because of work, because of constraints, because of stress and worry, because of whatever reason, sometimes our speaking with our family gets off the rails a little bit. And we wanted to share an episode with you to help you get that back on the rails and to use this holiday season, Thanksgiving to Christmas, all the parties in between, all the family gatherings, all the time with family, use that season to get your speaking with your family communication back on the right rails. Well, today you're going to celebrate Thanksgiving and then pretty soon it's going to be Christmas and then dinners and parties and gifts and hanging out with family and catching up with people you haven't seen in forever. For many of us, this is exhausting. Can I give a yes? Anybody, is that an exhausting for you? Peopling is getting harder and harder in 2023. Uh, sometimes it's just easier to hold ourselves uh, away at home and not have to worry about peopling at all. Or it's just easier to text our family and friends instead of not seeing them. Let me take you way back in time. The mid-80s, I can remember going to my grandma rates for hol uh, all the holiday parties, for uh, Thanksgiving, for Christmas, for all the all the different parties and it was the it, it was the greatest time ever as a kid because i adored my parents I, i've always had a great relationship with my parents they've always been my best friends they've always been my heroes they've always been models that i've looked up to and they loved their parents and so i had grandparents who adored me and i had parents who adored me and it was a win win i know some of you are listening going well it must have been nice it, it really was and it's a blessing and I, I don't ever want to use that in the wrong way. And I know that it was a blessing. Those of you who haven't had that experience, I'm sorry you haven't had that experience. Uh, my mom didn't have that experience growing up. She had abusive parents. She had a horrifically awful childhood. And she used to pray to God as a little girl for her own family so that when she had her own family, she could take care of them the way that she dreamt that her family took care of her. And she did it. She did it. I mean, she, my mom always created the most special things for my brother and I. She went way above and beyond. She worked 40 to 50 hours a week. I mean, this woman went back to school in her late 30s and got her bachelor's degree, then got her master's degree, all while working full time. And then on top of that, she got her th a couple thousand hours for her counseling license 
all while working full time while raising a family. So as you could tell, I'm a son who just adores his mother. I adore my father. But as a kid going to my grandma races in the city of Detroit on on Vaughn Road, and we'd pull up and we'd get there and the house is packed. It was a tiny little bungalow because in Detroit after World War II, they slapped up all these thousands of little tiny bungalows that literally had a, a tiny little bit of space in between them. And they were a, a downstairs, a regular floor and an upstairs. And I bet maybe it was a thousand square feet. Maybe, maybe if it was. So you walked into the house and it was really hot because there's all these bodies and it was Christmas time in Detroit. So it was freezing outside, hot on the inside. And I, I can, I can, I can go right back in time to walking into my grandmother's kitchen. I can see her standing there. I can smell the smells. I can hear her say, Jason, I can, I can, you know, I can sense her wanting me to come over and hug her. I, I can see my grandpa sitting in the corner. I can see the one little tiny TV on. Family parties were powerful. They were just powerful as a kid. It was absolutely amazing. So many memories. And then something happened to my family, which was awful. My grandmother died. And it was so much more than that. She was actually killed in a car accident by a woman who had a suspended license who ran a red light and hit the vehicle my grandma was in. And the vehicle flew and flipped and landed upside down. And it instantly killed my grandmother, uh, her sister, and a cousin all at once. And so our whole family was changed forever. And after that point, the family was pretty together because we were all rallying around this horrific moment in our family's history. And then slowly, we just started to kind of break apart. Our family, uh, obviously, we still did all the parties together and my parents. And then I fell in love with a woman and we got married. And then all of a sudden, we had kids. And so now we have, you know, all these traditions of our own. And then my brother got married and, then you know, our families all get together. But I think about those family parties and they were so much simpler, weren't they? I mean, one little tiny TV off in the corner, multiple card games going on, you know, people outside as they're dealing with the cold weather in Detroit, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and then they're back inside. Uh, you know, the dinner finally being ready and all of us spread out all over the place eating, you know, uh, just the most amazing meal cooked by my grandmother. Those days were so simpler. None of us, none of us had a phone in our pocket. None of us was spending time staring at the screen. We just talked. And so now in 2023 and beyond, we do have screens that take up most of our time, most of our time. And so I read the other day that uh, the average person in an hour sees about 2,000 different media images on their device. 2,000 media images. I just, I just can't believe it. 2,000 media images. And so... I want to do this podcast as a special, a special episode in the middle of this incredible series to challenge you moms, to challenge you dads, to challenge you stepmoms, stepdads, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, family members, to lean into your holiday parties, Thanksgiving, Christmas, however you celebrate, and to not waste moments while you're together with family to not waste moments. And so uh, I want to give you some ideas about how you can speak with your family. I want to give you some ideas about how you can speak with your family. And so really the, the first thing that you got to really think about is you got to create a welcoming atmosphere. Both you, you, your spirit, your personality, your attitude has to be in a welcoming mindset. If you walk into your family gathering and you're already negative, you're already got the pouty face on. You're already ticked off because you don't want to be there. You're already looking at your device. Well, guess what? It is not going to be a great, a great setting. So already set the tone in your own personality, your own spirit, your own heart, that you're going to create a welcoming atmosphere inside of your heart. Then if you're hosting the family party, do everything you can to create your house in a super welcoming. I mean, ambiance matters, right? Decorate your house with like the best decorations. Add so many lights to it. Put on some great music in the background. Light up the candles. Like make it the kind of place that people just want to be in. And then you set the tone. Set the tone. Prepare conversation starters. Think of fun and engaging conversation starters or icebreakers to get everybody talking. You know, I mean, it's just so great to be able to do that. Maybe, just maybe, encourage everybody before they come and say, hey, 
why don't we put away our devices during the meal time? Or why don't we put our devices on the countertop? So we got to talk to each other. For many of the teenagers, for many of the adults, this would be torture. But imagine if some great things can happen through it. So you got to create a welcoming atmosphere. Then you got to you got to really lean into your active listening and some empathy. You got to have some empathetic responses. So now that you've set the stage, let's dive into some of these active listening and empathetic empathetic responses. Like these are the skills that can significantly enhance your conversations with family members. Active listening. Okay, when we say active listening, you, you, you're going to have to put your device down if you're going to listen. So put your, your device down. Make sure you're not looking at your, your Apple Watch every two seconds. Uh, and then pay close attention when other people are speaking. Maintain eye contact. Nod. Offer verbal cues like, I see, or tell me more, or laugh at their jokes. Now, I will say this as a little bit of a sidebar. I'm 48 years old. I am young. I'm a young man. But my hearing is shot. And so... If there is loud music or if there's a lot of people in a room, I have, the, I have the hardest time hearing people. So tell people that. If they're selling, telling you something, you know, tell them. Like, hey, I'm having a hard time hearing you. I'm just going to turn my head so my ear is facing you. But just, you know, let them do that. Then have some kind of empathetic responses. Like practice empathy by understanding their perspective. You'll be able to validate their feelings and experiences, even if you disagree. And it's okay you're going to disagree. I mean, Crazy Uncle Harry might be there, who, you know, is the biggest conspiracy theorist in the world. Who knows? You can still listen to him, though. Uh, another thing that you can do by act, practicing active listening is to avoid interrupting. Avoid interrupting. Let the person that's talking talk. Let them talk. Make a conscious effort not to interrupt. It can be so frustrating to the person that's talking and hinder effective communication. So we're going to create a welcoming atmosphere in our space and in our heart. Uh, we're then going to uh, get ready with some active listening and empathetic responses. And then we're going to do the art of asking open-ended questions. Asking open-ended questions. No more horrible questions like, how was your day? Good. How are you doing? Good. Okay, no more horrible questions like that, all right? Get some questions ready, you know? And so he here's actually some, here's some good ones. Here's a simple one. What's new? What's new? Like, tell me what's new since the last time we've spoken. Oh, that's a great question. And then when they say something, follow it up with tell me more about that. Like, encourage them to elaborate on it. Uh, be empathetic and you're, you know, like, wow, that must have hurt. Tell me more. That must have been awesome. Tell me more. Uh, ask them questions like, what are you looking for in the new year? Like, do you have any big plans in 2024? Are you taking any exciting trips? What's the thing you're most looking forward to? You can kind of dive deeper if you want to. Ask questions like, what's something in 2023 that you're going to avoid in 2024? But ask those, ask those kind of questions. Learn about their job. Learn about their life. Learn about their favorite things. Ask them what, you know, the best movie they saw. What was the, your favorite TV show? Why did you love it? People are going to ask me that. I'm going to say, Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso, love Ted Lasso. And I can give you like 900 reasons why I love it. So have those great questions. Uh, and then just, just a little, here's a little point of advice. Avoid sensitive topics, all right? Avoid sensitive topics. You can really draw a wedge. Say you've got some family members who are deeply Democratic and you've got some who are deeply Republican. And things are so divided. We should be able to talk about those differences, but for whatever in 2023, we end up fighting more than, more than not about political stuff. So maybe avoid it. Maybe avoid it. Or maybe there's, you know, something sensitive that happened in their family. Uh, someone got fired from a job. Someone broke up. Somebody, a spouse left another spouse. Uh, if those opportunities don't lend itself naturally, don't bring them up. Uh, open communication is essential, but it's also crucial to steer clear of sensitive topics that can lead to arguments. So navigate some landmines. So set boundaries. Establish some family rules. You know, avoid some of this stuff. Uh, recognize maybe some triggers. Uh, be aware of what might provoke some emotional responses. Uh, as I grew up as a kid in Michigan, it was U of M or Michigan State. You know, know those kind of things. And then learn how to change the subject if those touchy things are coming up. Gently redirect the conversation to a natural one. Let me give you a couple other just kind of additional tips. Uh, get ready to share some personal stories. Uh, think about some personal stories that you can share, things that just happened to you this last year that you can't wait to share with people. 
Uh, be genuinely interested. And don't just be interested adults in the adults. Ask the kids these questions. Don't dominate the conversation. One of the things we teach and speak with people all the time, all the time, is 80-20, 80-20. 20% of the time, I'm asking incredible questions. 80% of the time, I'm sitting back. I'm practicing active listening, and I am absorbing everything that they are saying. Uh, practice patience, patience, patience. In the Bible, in 1 Corinthians 13, it says that love is patient. That word patient actually means takes a long time to boil, to boil. Like, think about that, right? All of us have been frustrated about how quickly something's boiling in the past. Let your patience just take forever to boil. Let it boil. Use humor. Oh, my goodness, use humor. Oh, you know, I'll have a couple of that's what she said comments ready. I'll have a couple of jokes ready to go. I won't say all the sarcastic jokes that are coming to mind. Uh, also express gratitude. Like use, use that moment, use that moment to tell people how you feel about them. Uh, I, I didn't mean to take the beginning of the podcast so deep, but I can go back to 1995, Christmas of 1995. And my girlfriend and I were leaving because we were driving to Minnesota for a youth conference. And I hugged my grandmother quickly because I knew I would see her. I, I, I helped drive her to work. I was always with my grandma. And I hugged her really quickly and I said, I love you, and I left. And three days later, she was killed by the car. And so <laughs> use every minute you have together with your family to express gratitude, to say words that breathe life into them. Be grateful for the time that you have together. And then just be present. Be present. There, now, there comes a time where you're going to have to disconnect and sit away by yourself or go for a walk. Great. But just be present with them. Be present. Holidays are big time. Thanksgiving, Christmas, all the parties, all the work parties, all the neighborhood stuff. But you can create a welcoming atmosphere in your heart and in, in the actual house. You can practice active listening. You can ask open-ended questions. You can avoid sensitive topics. And you can make your parties enjoyable and meaningful by being present and listening and asking great questions. I hope this was helpful. I hope that you're going to have an absolutely great Thanksgiving. Again, I would love to know if this series, Lead With People, Not At Them, has been helpful for you. Email me, jason at speakwithpeople.com. Let me know if it's helpful. Have you downloaded the Leadership Collective, an ebook just packed full of leadership principles from 37 different leaders from around the country? Have you downloaded it yet? Speakwithpeople.com slash leadwithpeople. And lastly, have you left a review on the Speak With People podcast? If you listen to this week in, week out, and you love it, could you please tell Apple Podcasts or Spotify Podcasts? I'm, I'm serious. You have no idea how much it means to press those five little stars and to leave a, a, a recommendation or a referral. Hey, I love the podcast. Or this podcast teaches me so much. Or I love, you know, whatever it is about it. It really does help spread the podcast to new listeners, and it helps us reach an even newer audience. Thanks again for being a part. I hope that your holiday season is amazing. Get get ready for the next episode in the series. It is absolutely incredible. If you missed any up to this point, uh, go to speakwithpeople.com slash podcast and catch up. And you and I, let's lead with people, not at them. And I hope that our time today encourages you, inspires you, challenges you to elevate the importance of practice of healthy communication in your life and leadership. And I hope that you will speak with people and not at them. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.